It is sad that we are even contemplating something like critical race theory, where children will be separated by their skin color and deemed permanently oppressors or oppressed in 2021. Welcome to The Real News. I'm Jess Lenore. Over the past year, conservatives have been fixated on banning critical race theory, spreading outright lies like the comments we just heard about what it is, while claiming that it's racist to study how legal institutions perpetuate a racial caste system in America. That's right. It's racist to study racism. When questioned, few of its outspoken critics have been able to articulate what it is or how exactly it's doing what they claim. Nevertheless, from Fox News to local school board meetings, it's clear that critical race theory, however it's defined, has been turned into a lightning rod for the right-wing outrage machine. Media critic Jay Rosen noted the uptick in reference to critical race theory over the past two months has dominated the airwaves at Fox News. On June 16th, Texas became the latest state to ban the teaching of critical race theory in schools, following similar bans in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Florida. Civil rights groups have argued the bans are unconstitutionally limiting free speech, and educators have vowed to defy them. Some on the right have been more open about why they want to ban critical race theory. As the New Republic wrote this week, the slipperiness of the right-wing version of critical race theory is the point. It's so loosely defined that almost anything of or pertaining to a conversation about race qualifies. The movement at Fox News is not so much further to the right, as further from the real, Rosen tweeted. To break all this down, we speak with Kamika Royal, Associate Professor of Urban Education at Loyola University of Maryland, an actual critical race scholar and educator. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we were talking off off screen, and I know that you are tired of talking about this, of explaining this to people, of having these arguments, because it's really a distraction from, you know, bigger, much more pressing issues in this country. But, you know, thank you for bearing with us and having this conversation. So start off by by talking about what what critical race theory is. Is it actually taught in public schools? Um, And can you share an example of what a critical race theory based lesson plan looks like? Um, so critical race theory, it comes from critical legal studies, um, in the 1970s, Derek Bell, uh, uh, Matt Crenshaw, uh, Richard Delgado, um, these folks, uh, Mary Matsuda, um, started sort of articulating the ways racism plays out in the American legal system. All right. Um, In 1994-95, Gloria Ladson-Billings and William Tate write toward a critical race theory of education, and in that way, they bring critical race theory into um, an analysis of schools and schooling in the United States as a way to examine how racism plays out in American schools. There are several tenets of critical race theory, like the permanence of racism, which means that Racism is systemic, endemic, and fully embedded in every facet of American life. Um, Whiteness as property, uh, which Cheryl Harris, who is an attorney, has an awesome article where she walks through the idea of whiteness as property with property bearing the ultimate rights in the United States. Um, The importance of counter storytelling. and this is a thing in that we have these sort of grand narratives that exist in, in the United States. And because education is my area of research, a grand narrative we have in terms of education would be that schools are the great equalizer. Within critical race theory, a counter narrative or counter narratives, because it holds that counter narratives matter, it would sort of ask the question, in what ways might schools not be the great equalizer? And so then we would value those stories or those narratives, which sort of interrupt um, that grand narrative, this big idea, because that schools are not that uh, great equalizer for everybody. Interest convergence, uh, the idea that white people will only do um, what benefits them. So when we talk about creating reforms, um, leaning on uh, white folks in terms of the the having holding power and privilege, um, asking them to in some ways give up that power and privilege simply because it is the moral thing or the ethical thing to do, that doesn't really happen. So the way that 
interest convergence argues that white people will only give things up to the extent that it benefits them in some way, right? There's a convergence of interest. It can't just be because it's the right thing. Um, a critique of liberalism, meaning uh, meritocracy, neutrality, uh, and colorblindness, which uh, my colleague Subini Anama, in order not to be um, ableist, has sort of moved that language into color evasion. It's These things are farcical. They don't exist. Meritocracy is a farce. Um, and then intersectionality, uh, which is Kimberly Crenshaw all day. Um, she is this sort of arbiter of this, this idea that people have identities that experience um, intersecting or multiple oppressions. So whatever um, sort of uh, things we may experience, uh, especially those of us who are of color, our multiple identities sort of intersect in those things. So um, if for instance, uh, students are experienced, black students on campus are experiencing oppression, that is going to be experienced differently by Black students who are women, because women experience oppression, um, Black students who are male, uh, because of how Black males are treated in society. Um, one's class status or income level sort of plays a role into that, one's education level. So this is what we mean by intersectionality. In terms of, is this being taught in schools? I mean, I think it depends on what kind of school we're talking about. So in my classes as a university professor, I do have a statement in my syllabi and I tell my students, I'm a critical race theorist. I am approaching this class uh, from a critical race perspective, which means in this class, in every class I teach, we will examine the ways that racism uh, is fully embedded in whatever aspect of schooling we're examining. Um, now, is that being done in K-12? I think it depends. I think there may be some pieces of it, but I, I think it's highly unlikely. There may be some teachers who are talking to their students, especially students in history, social science classes about things like interest convergence. Okay. Um, they may have some uh, critique of liberalism, right? They may be challenging the idea of meritocracy. Um, but by and large, no, I don't think this is happening in K-12 schools. Now, something I think is interesting is apparently people, because critical race theory has been sort of condensed to, you know, CRT, there are people who've been confusing critical race theory with culturally relevant or responsive teaching. It's not the same thing. I think culturally relevant and responsive teaching is more likely to happen in schools. I think it should happen in schools. Um, and neither should be banned from schools. I feel like uh, you know, I, these these governments, these state governments are spending so much time um, banning critical race theory or CRT, as they call it, from schools. Um, in a way, one, I think, to carry forth something that Trump started during his presidency when he uh, sort of banned critical race theory in any federal government trainings and contracts and things like that. Um, also, I think it's a signal. I think, I mean, we, we see these conversations come up over and over and over again. So I'm thinking about when I was in high school, thinking about the culture wars in the 90s and these battles over curriculum. And I think the, the hot issue then was multicultural education and who has a right to say what America is. And, you know, are we sort of ethnocentric? Do we do we communicate this? Uh, American exceptionalism, or, or you know, is it okay to be a hyphenated American? That's what the conversation was when I was in high school, you know, 25, 28, one high school, 25 years. I graduated 26 years ago. So, uh, you know, 30, between 26 and 30 years ago, that was the conversation then. And now we're hearing, well, we don't want critical race theory because, you know, it's going to make white children feel bad. Um, I think how they feel is a matter of what they're learning about themselves. But critical race theory in education is an analysis of how racism plays out in schools. It's not necessarily an individual indictment. Um, it is a critique of systems and people uphold systems and structures. So if people are upholding racist systems and structures, then they do need to interrogate themselves. Um, but I think this, this, this ban and a lot of the conversation around it um, I think it's silly. I think it's a distraction. Honestly, uh, with the type of instructor, professor, teacher, person I am, my 
thought becomes, well, what are you going to do? I mean, are you going to fire somebody if they mention if they mention racism, are you going to fire them? Um, if you talk about, if, if I'm a history teacher and I'm teaching about the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, am I now going to be subject to, uh, which which I learned, I remember learning about in eighth grade, right? So um, if, if I'm teaching about the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, um, so freedom, citizenship, and then voting, right? If, if, if this is what's happening, then is that is that teacher going to be written up? Like, where is the, what is the consequence um, of this boogeyman uh, and this witch hunt people are doing around this whole critical race theory thing? I think it's silly and I think it's misguided. And I think these are people who have nothing better to do than try to figure out how to honor the president who didn't get reelected. I wanted to um, read you a couple of quotes. Um, The first is from Governor Pete Ricketts of Nebraska, um, one of the states that was considering a ban on CRT. He said, it's an attack on America's core values. America's America's founding is based on the idea that all men are created equal. um, And the effect of critical race theory is to pit American people against one another. Um, And I think, you know, I think that that seems to be evoked in this discussion of critical race theory. It's often tied into the 1619 project looking at, you know, in the, you know, we may have had founding principles in this country, but how was it applied? Who could vote? You know, who, ha- who had fundamental rights in this country? Who was considered property? And to sort of erase those movements around, um, you know, around the actual history. So it's, in, in some sense, it is the suppression of actual history. But, um, you know, it comes full circle to today because now, you know, dozens of states are considering voter suppression laws, um, you know, and which which they don't come out and say is voter suppression, but they say they're trying to protect the ballot. And without this context, without the, without the history of, of, you know, people dying and sacrificing everything to secure uh, basic rights, then that becomes more believable. But if you put in the context of the civil rights movement, of the abolition movement, um, you know, uh, the, the, the founding of this country being, you know, giving white men, property owning white men, the right to vote. If you erase that, you're going to have a very different conclusion. So, you know, I, so I would agree with the idea that it is a distraction. Um, you know, the arguments around what this country was founded on, whenever I hear somebody start to talk about what this country was founded on, I have to be honest with you. I sort of tune out at that point. That's my exit. Um, because there's no conversation we can have around what this country was founded on when, um, my ancestors were literally in chains, were in the bottom of ships, were being brought here to be um, property. There's no conversation we can have about a founding. The founding um, wasn't for many of us. And so to then not acknowledge that or to pretend that, be, you know, now we're all equal, um, that didn't happen is, is honestly ridiculous to me. Um, and it's an insult. To, to, to those people who had to be, who were enslaved um, and who fought and died for our freedom. Um, that is, it's beyond insulting to me. I also think some of this is, a, is you know, I, I thank God for Nicole Hannah-Jones. Um, I don't think her project, I don't, I don't know where she ever argued she was a critical race theorist, but I am grateful for the conversation um, that she invited uh, and ignited throughout this country. Um, well, so we're running out of time, but I want to just, I want to touch on some of the claims that are being repeated, um, by people on social media about, about critical race theory. So I'm going to read you a few of them and uh, I w- want you to respond to that before we run out of time. Um, so he- here's some quotes. The actual racists are pushing critical race theory, a system that teaches black kids. They're not as smart as their white counterparts is racist. The white teacher telling you, you can't be a doctor because you're not smart. You should consider being a truck driver or something. That's racist. Maybe public schools should go back to teaching math and English and other important topics. Other countries are surpassing us in education due to the indoctrination. Wonder why. Um, So so these are some of the right wing talking points that, you know, as we know, um, get perpetuated widely on social media and on places like Fox News. Um, I almost feel bad asking you to respond to them because they are so ridiculous. But, you know, if there are people that are trying to understand or, you know, or are trying or are trying to get a different perspective because all they you know listen to is Fox News and click on, you know, right wing memes. What would you what would you tell someone that, you know, that is told this is what critical race theory is? 
The first thing I'll say is if all you watch is Fox News, then I don't really believe you're trying to understand. So let's start with that. Um, the next thing, though, is this idea that if if I, what I heard you say was if a white teacher is telling a black child they can't be a doctor, they should be a truck driver. That's racist. That is racist. Yes, that part is actually accurate. It actually reminds me of the clip from the Malcolm X movie from 1992, where he tells his teacher he wants to be a lawyer. Um, and his teacher tells him, you're good with your hands. You should be a carpenter. And then references Jesus. Jesus was a carpenter. You should be a carpenter. That's what that sounds like to me. But that's not what critical race theory does. Critical race theory, again, is a way of looking at, critical race theory in education is a way of looking at how racism is perpetuated in schools. It has nothing to do with what message you're giving Black children around what they can and cannot be, who they can be, what they can do. Um, and I don't know where that sort of misidea, unless somebody just created that, you know, for to, to I just think it's, it's silly and it's, it really is ridiculous, like almost laughable, worthy of ridicule. It's nuts to me. Um, if, if your teacher is teaching black children that they can't be something, I, I think that is ridiculous, but critical race theory is about how racism exists. It doesn't, Hold that you can't do certain things. I mean, anybody, especially with this coming from black scholars and other scholars of color, the narrative was never, we can't uh, aspire to these different jobs or positions because of racism, but it does talk about the, the structural barriers that are in place to hold, to make it even harder for us to do, to do those things. I'm first generation college. I can't imagine um, being a professor and who never knew a professor prior to going to college. Okay. I can't imagine then telling black students or any student of color or any student for that matter, you can't do these things because of structural racism. Structural racism exists and people have to know it exists if they're going to figure out how to navigate it, how to push back against it, how to challenge it and disrupt it. But to pretend it doesn't exist is to, um, ill-equip our children and our young people for what they're going to face and have already been facing, whether they had the language to communicate what they were facing or not. Yeah. And as a, um, you know, former educator in um, New York city public schools, I used to work at a museum where I would visit classrooms, you know, schools are not teaching real history. And I, I was privileged enough to bring in primary sources and things that would actually connect with young people, um, in an urban environment. And, um, and yeah, and, and so, I guess what I'll end on is if, you know, if you are a student watching this, if you're a teacher watching, watching this, or just a concerned citizen, where can you go to learn more about critical race theory? I, I know like the 1619 project is, is not critical race theory, but it is a great resource to learn about the history of this country. Um, what are some other sources that, that people can go to um, if, if they want to learn and expand, expand their knowledge of things that are often not taught in, in, in textbooks and history books? Yep. Um, so there's a, uh... I would start with, I, mean, I think this is Googleable. I think you can download this. There's a PDF of um, a Derek Bell talk, uh, Who's Afraid of Critical Race Theory? Okay, I would do that. Um, Gloria Ladson Billings also has a great piece that I think, again, is good. And I know it's Googleable because I sent it to somebody who sent me angry emails about critical race theory. Um, and that one is called what just what is critical race theory and what is it doing in a nice field like education? I would start with those. Um, I would also not I, I don't it. I would not trust um, my government leadership to tell me what conversations we should be having about race and racism. Um, and I, I anybody who wants to reduce. Um, racism to individual random acts instead of um, things that are held up by systems and structures that are intentionally preserved. Um, they're trying to sell you something. They're trying to sell you this uh, American uh, exceptionalism hype and lie. Well, Dr. Kamika Royal, Associate Professor of Urban Education at Loyola University of Maryland, an actual critical race scholar and educator. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this really important issue. And there's a lot more, um, you know, we want to talk to you about, and we'll definitely have you on again soon for, um, 
a, a, probably a different topic. I think we've I think we've covered the ground here. Well, there's a lot of other a lot of other great topics, um, a lot of important movements happening in education right now, and uh, we'll definitely have you on again soon. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Real News Network.